All right, today we are taking the train to Tampere, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, to go to Nokia Arena because so many of you guys have told us that Nokia Arena is the hottest ticket in the whole country for Finnish hockey. But before we go there, I want to show you guys two things here in Helsinki that to me are tremendously unique, meaning we've never seen them in any other country, and also very interesting uh, sort of historical and cultural things before we jump on the train. So let's go. I guess it's always Christmas in Finland. Lots of Santa Claus souvenir shops all around here. The home of Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> and so we've come to this very unique looking building behind me, which at first glance sort of looks like a museum of geology mm -hmm. or maybe an archaeological dig right. but as you go inside you'll see that it is a fully functioning church with some familiar aspects the rows and rows of pews and a huge organ on one side but what's unique about it is it is built inside one gigantic piece of rock mm -hmm. so they've excavated through this massive rock so that all of the walls of the church are one solid piece of stone it's really impressive <laughs> and unique inside and i love the way they've left the vertical lines in the stone of the gigantic excavation equipment that was sort of breaking through the rock mm -hmm. has a real rough and sort of uh, rugged vibe to it almost medieval inside right. even some of the stone is shiny because there's water dripping in mm -hmm. has a very interesting feel in there and then when they broke through the rock the small pieces they gathered they stacked on top to make the wall a little higher and then put a low sort of dome on top with a copper ceiling right. it's uh something unique and memorable for us we've never seen anything like it now you might have heard that finnish people love heavy metal they have this reputation in the world and their love for heavy metal extends into the church mm -hmm. so you can imagine going to mass in the mm -hmm. rock church behind me and the traditional hymns that they perform at mass they do it to the music of heavy metal in something known as metal mass, wow. which is a real unique twist on something we've seen a lot because as travel vloggers, we go to churches and we uh, have had this experience in many countries, but we've never seen a church inside of a rock excavation. Mm -hmm. And the, the image in my head of heavy metal rock guitars <laughs> on the traditional hymns, it's something totally unique right. and very memorable for us. So uh, I guess there's a class trip here of some yes. local Finnish kids School trip. <laughs> uh, learning the history. I guess it was Finnish construction in the 60s mm -hmm. by two local brothers who won some awards because it's totally unique uh, mm -hmm. architecture and uh, quite nice for us. So let's keep going. Alright, so next up we've come to Senate Square, which is really prime real estate for a statue here in Helsinki because on top of the hill we have Helsinki Cathedral, which is massive on the outside and surprisingly big when you go inside. And to my understanding, it's still in use today, meaning there are regular worshippers and mass. And seeing as it's up on top of the hill, it provides a pretty good viewpoint for not only the government palace, but also one of the main buildings in Helsinki University. And so these three buildings are all pointing inwards and looking at this statue where you'd expect to see a Finnish hero. But in fact, this man is very Russian. And so the brief history of Finland tells us that for hundreds and hundreds of years, Finland was under the sort of emperor or empire of Sweden. And then in the early 1800s, the Russian empire took over. And so as you can imagine, there was a growing sentiment of, hey, we are not Swedish people and we are not Russian people. We are in fact Finnish people. And so believe it or not, this man, Alexander II, who was the Russian emperor, who was also the Grand Duke of Finland, sort of by default, uh, he was very sympathetic to this growing Finnish nationalism. During his reign, Finland got their own currency, as well as they elevated the language of Finnish to be the national language and more importantly he made a lot of policies that uh, sort of fostered the development of what would ultimately become the sovereignty of Finland and so it's interesting to me because based on many conversations I've had with Finnish people in the past few weeks I think if there were a statue here of a more modern Russian leader the Finnish people would not react very well at all and so it's sort of interesting that with a reputation for a pacifist foreign policy as well as uh, being a guy who always avoided war and really sought peace you can really have quite a good 
reputation. And for a bit of a North American connection, Alexander II is also the guy who sold Alaska to the United States with the same thing in mind of avoiding armed conflict and just sort of wanting to keep peace. And so it's very interesting to me that a Russian man is, I guess, a Finnish hero, seeing on the location of the statue. And at the very least, he played an integral role in the sort of development of the modern and sovereign nation of Finland. So something very interesting for me and I wanted to mention it. And with that being said, let's go to Tampere where maybe there'll be some sunshine. <laughs> let's go to the train station. And so I guess the train station is under a bit of renovation now, which is probably not the first time it's been renovated considering it was first built in 1862. <laughs> Uh, our breakfast before we get on the train today at this little cute cafe. I'm not sure what I'm having here. <laughs> Let's try. Looks like potatoes and carrots inside. Potatoes and carrots. Almost looks like rice a little bit. Mm. Survey says. Very good. Some, some kind of like crust on top. Actually, it looks good. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like pastry. Ooh, I think it has sal salmon. It's kind of like the salmon soup in a pastry form. Ah, uh, got it. Very good. Good one. Yeah, I like it. And so I guess this is the end of the line. Only one way to go. Mm-hmm. It's me or that's a big train? It is big. A big train. Yeah. Two floors. Downstairs and upstairs and we'll be upstairs. Okay, we're going upstairs. That's Pretty nice. I guess my green jacket is matching very nicely. <laughs> True. And even come with a Hesburger oh. tray. Thank you very much. <laughs> Two hours, right? Two hours. Not bad. Yes. Yeah, before you know it. Comfy? Oh gosh. <laughs> Good. Plug for laptop. Ah, very nice. Oh, now, is there free Wi Fi on a finished train? Not. Free Wi-Fi it doesn't have any sign of free Wi-Fi. But it is a laptop plug, which is pretty good. Yeah, very good. By the way, we have a major development in the train ride. We got Wi-Fi, everybody, it's and it's working. Free Wi-Fi, and it's working great. <laughs> good. Best train ever. Our train snacks. Mmm. Oh, thank you. And you say I never buy you anything. Come on, Ivan. <laughs> Thanks, babe. <laughs> oh man, that looks lame. <laughs> Is it good? Is it good? <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> I tell you what, if you looked out the window here and you said this was Canada, I believe you. The sort of frozen farms with the trees in between looks very similar to the train rides when you leave Toronto on the way to Coburg or something. We made it. Tampere. Oh. I guess they put gravel here. Oh yeah. Not Make it for, hard to roll. Not great rolling stations. Yeah. <laughs> All right, final review of our first Finnish train experience. Listen, there's a sign in there that says we're going 160 kilometers an hour, but you could have fooled me because it is so exceedingly quiet in there. There's no wind noise or track noise. Felt like we were just going along pretty slowly, but we are here in an hour and a half, so it must be about uh, 160 kilometers an hour, which is pretty nice. I do sort of regret bringing a very crunchy apple because I felt like everybody could hear me eating. Pro tip, bring a banana. Uh, in any case, there is a vehicle on the train where you can buy food. We didn't try any, mm -hmm. although it looked pretty good. We saw some pasta and veggie Coffee. dish. Coffee. Coffee and we stuff. We had our Hesburger. We had our Hesburgers <laughs> and apples, and uh, the Wi-Fi worked the entire way. True, yes. Didn't drop once, which uh -huh. is pretty impressive. So good finished train experience. Okay, let's go to our accommodation, and then we'll hit the town. Oh, look at this. This is a train station right there. Right, you see? Right. Oh, see right there. Nokia Arena. Oh. The reason we came, it's right there. 
And now for the 70 euro or so per night room tour. I'll write the price on the screen because uh, I'm doing some conversion in my head, but something like 70 euros a night. It is a small space, but it's clearly been freshly renovated. We've got the washing machine, which we need, and uh, everything is kind of clean and nice. You can see the floors are all brand new. Almost looks like a studio apartment here, mm -hmm. but there is a kitchen around the corner and you can see the countertops and everything. Quite nice and for us, uh, more than manageable. Now, I wanted to show you guys the finished radiator because this is not the first time I've seen it and I know it's a bit random, but I've never seen a radiator like this. It's so thin, it almost looks like a plasma screen TV. It's so thin and it is the uh, same thing you've seen before, but uh, you know, water, hot water radiator. But I can't tell if it's a new thing that they've added in or if it's so old and it's just this way, but it is a totally unique radiator. Also, finished windows tend to be double pane glass. I think it's for insulation they do this, but if you look, there's a second kind of pane out here, glass, and then the blinds go in the middle. So uh, I guess one benefit is you don't have to clean the blinds. They're in between two panes of glass. They do work like normal blinds, but I think it's for insulation purposes because it's freezing cold out there and it's super warm in here. Yes. Sleek radiators and double insulated windows. Come on, living the dream in Finland. Anyway, let's hit the streets because I'm hungry and I heard this is a chicken wing town. Let's go. And I'm a chicken wing kind of guy. <laughs> Look no further for evidence, it's very cold out here, okay? <laughs> Tell you what, nice looking building, but even better. Look at the train going by. <laughs> nice mural, no? I think it's a funny shot for a band. Anyway, we have came to the city center. This is the main square. It looks very quiet here on a like winter Sunday. I, someone told me in the comments that there's two countries. There's Finland in the mm -hmm. summer and Finland in the winter. Uh huh. So maybe we've got to come back in the summer. Maybe not right, in the summer. Right. We're very busy, but you can imagine this place will be full of people in the summer. Yes, I Cafes think so. Cafes and sort of a lively place. Like uh, lots of events going on. I think so. Yeah. Some nice looking buildings. I'm going to venture on a limb and say this building is done in the Art Nouveau style. Mm -hmm. I wow. say that because it's like 25% uglier than all the other buildings. Oh, what? Uh, this one clearly better with the exposed brick on top of the windows. <laughs> Really? I think it's much more beautiful. And then to the right again, for me, the top building with the high arching windows and the gray roof, that's a nice looking building. Yeah. Although yeah. to be clear, my journey into architecture is just beginning. So I don't know too much. <laughs> for but, uh, me, they all look beautiful actually. <laughs> Art Nouveau. No, I like it. Come on, it's, it's nice. It's gingerbread and not so I like it. authentic. Too new for me. <laughs> Anyway, I think we should make a plan to come back in the summer because it will be really yes, happy. Yeah, I think here. we'll come back in the summertime. Fair. Also in the winter time to visit Santa Claus. Like Christmas time. Yeah, we kind of we're, we're here in March, which is one of the lowest yeah, seasons. We're but in March. The trip has been so good strictly because of hockey. Uh, I have no regrets. Yes, that's right. We're in like the lowest season for tourism. Yes. There you have it. Okay, <laughs> let's eat, no? Yes. Yeah, see, I'm assuming this is also Art Nouveau style. And even this brown one on the corner. Could be wrong i'm still learning but the thing is it doesn't look old and it doesn't look new it just looks weird no, i think that's my favorite building so far here Your the favorite yellow, one. yellow and red that one is a bit like a castle kind of good looking but yeah i'm an exposed brick man myself <laughs> or give me like a gothic or a neo-gothic i'm in for that <laughs> Mona, do me a favor Google check. What is the architectural style of this building? It is Neo-Gothic. Did you check? Yes. <sighs> Neo-Gothic is the answer. So nice turn. It is nice, but I also like the other style. Look at this. It is beautiful. And uh, for me, with this kind of weather, it's kind of gives off like an eerie, say, eerie feeling. A tree with no leaves? Yeah. That's a neo-gothic tree right there. Big fan. <laughs> neo-gothic tree. <laughs> Very cool. And I really like the gravel here. 
I mean, it's not great when you're walking with luggage, but it prevents you from slipping. I like it. Look at this. All right, so just before we eat, we've decided to check out the Museum of Vladimir Lenin because we were curious what it's doing here in Finland. And as it turns out, this exact building behind me, the Lenin Museum, is precisely the place where Lenin met Stalin for the very first time. And so the reason these two sort of revolutionaries were here is because if you remember, Alexander II had given a lot of autonomy to uh, Finland at the time and so these two revolutionaries came here to plan their protests and stuff because if they were staying in Moscow or something they would be arrested immediately. So ultimately in 1917 Vladimir Lenin took power of what was then called Soviet Russia and if you can believe it he came back right here in Tempere and he ate a black sausage which is the same sausage that so many YouTube comments have told me to try. And evidently, if what that museum says is true, he ate the black sausage and says, any people who made this sausage so delicious deserve to have independence. And it was in fact Vladimir Lenin who gave Finland its first independence in the year of 1917. So it sounds like something you say in a museum or almost like a wives tale, some kind of myth that never happened. But in the museum, it swears it's true that Vladimir Lenin ate the sausage and gave Finland its independence based on the sausage. So that's why there's a Lenin Museum right here in Tempere. And so in any case, the museum was kind of good, but it was a bit confusing. It was sort of out of order. Right, right, out right. of nowhere, there was a, a typical living room of Estonian <laughs> in 1970. Didn't right. even seem related to the Vladimir Lenin at all. It was sort of an unorganized museum, but we did learn a lot about uh, the Finnish and Soviet reputation and relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, something interesting. Yeah. For me, it was worth a visit. It was worth a visit, yeah, eight euros. I learned something new. Small museum, sort of unorganized, but interesting in the end. Yes. Okay, there you have it. So anyway, let's go eat chicken wings. <laughs> and so we've come to the most highest recommended wing joint in all of Tampere with the most confusing logo. Because at first glance, it looks like it's flames and a chicken because they sell hot wings. But Ivana says, look at the beak of that animal that is clearly a duck. And so is the duck eating the chicken wings? Or is the duck the one killing the chicken to ensure duck supremacy in the world of poultry? Why is there a duck in flames at this chicken joint? We don't know. Hmm, Something new. But in any case, I think Finland is trying to be my favorite country because this already, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, that's five star food. Mm, look at that. The color, the smell, the fact that the wings are pretty small, which is kind of good that you don't want the huge wings that are like steroided up. Um, this is gonna be so good. Oh yeah. We opted for the hot garlic flavor. We were thinking of going for kamikaze, but quite honestly, I have things to do tomorrow. So <laughs> hot garlic it is. Mm. Mm. And the dip. Mm. And we got the blue cheese dip, which oh, so good. Look at that right there, oh yeah. The uh, orange color you can see, mm -hmm. it's a strong vinegar flavor, it's sour. Ah, the sour. vinegar in the hot sauce is so good on wings. This for me, I mean, Five very, stars? very familiar. Oh, please, six stars. This is the best. Six stars. Some of my favorite food. Is it true that a basket of wings covered in sauce is American? Certainly, buffalo what? wing sauce comes from yeah. Buffalo, but this to me is very American. I think hot very wings. Familiar. I think hot wings is from Buffalo, New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. but in Finland, mm. Tampere is the wings capital of Finland. Mm -hmm. You know, so and this is this restaurant is like the most recommended one mm. Mm. <laughs> so listen if you want to see us eat black sausage we're doing that soon in the hockey arena yeah so you'll see that footage coming soon but um for me really good spicy wings and curly fries mm. Mm. Look at this. yum yum curly fries what can be better than that and the fries are very salty very good Typically, I add salt on the fries. Mm -hmm. No extra salt required. <laughs> extremely <laughs> salty, and by the way, extremely curly. Look at this. I'm impressed with that curly fry. <laughs> You're funny. Anyway, I don't know what analysis to provide other than this is the food I was born and raised on, and I love it for a reason because it's so good. Yum. Yum. Love it too. I love Tampere. These wings are good. <laughs> All right. It's good. 
Cheers, everybody. Bing. Good, right? Oh, the wings are good, Ivana. <laughs> oh, by the way, you like this part better or the other part better? Mm, honestly, I, I, I'm a bit of a two-bone man myself, but I'm, I'm, I mean, I like wings so much. I oh my god, like it's so sour. It sounds guys. good, right? Mm. Mm. The sour is in there. Sour and spicy, wow. Yeah, Works me up. And by the way, the beer here, also nine euros. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if they're gonna play hockey here. I'm gonna watch a game or something, but. Okay, you mm, talking sauce? about the sauce oh. over here. <laughs> by the way, didn't even notice. What the heck is this? Cucumber. It's supposed to be celery, dude. <laughs> Carrots and cucumber here mm -hmm. in Finland. I'll tell you what, I'm here for it. It's something new, but it's a Finnish twist. Anyway. By the way, the wings. They don't even need dips. They don't need dips. So saucy. Very saucy. Yeah. Although I realize I've been doing a lot of thinking recently. Because they always serve blue cheese with spicy wings. Blue cheese is cheese with mold. Uh -huh. Killing the spice in the same way yogurt does with the cultures. Really? <laughs> I don't know. What One of my many theories, okay? <laughs> I don't know about that, but. <laughs> All right, everybody. Feel free to play along at home. How many wings are in this basket? The results may surprise you. One, two, three, four, five. Look at this, look at this. Six over here. It's so saucy, I can't believe how saucy it's like, it is. It's like curry almost. It's like a- uh... Almost like curry sauce. <laughs> My mouth is starting to tingle, to be honest. I'm tingling, by the way, not, it's not good it's, flavor. It's not that spicy, but it's just sour. Oh, great. The sourness is really good. Yeah. Big fan of sour. Yeah. The hot here is not that spicy compared to Canada. Canada wings, if you order hot, it's really spicy. This is like a medium in Canada. Yeah, that's right. Well, it looks still kind of spicy for me. Yes. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Because yesterday, after we had those chicken wings, we went live right here on YouTube where we had a pretty good audience actually. So thanks to everybody who watched us and also helped us because we learned that the black sausage we were hoping to have at the arena is not exactly a typical sausage where you would put it in a bun with mustard and onions, like sort of dog. arena food, yeah. right. It's actually more of a traditional food. Mm -hmm. And so we've come to this traditional market, which I guess is also Art Nouveau on the outside. So yeah. sorry everybody, it's not my favorite, but here we are and we found what I think is the only black sausage in the market mm -hmm. where it looks, uh, it, does, it looks interesting. <laughs> Serve with lingonberry. We had the option of sweet or sour lingonberry. We went for sweet. Mm -hmm. I think we love the Ivana might have the first bite. Oh, really? You seem a little bit more eager to try. Okay, I am just curious. I tried blood sausage before in Korea and I did not like it. It was but almost the worst thing we've ever had in our lives. This might be different. I don't know. We'll try. I'm a bit nervous. I have some food phobia where sometimes in my head I can decide it's bad and then before I even try it, I've already <laughs> made it bad in my head. So I gotta give it a chance. And honestly, it's not clear to me how frequently this is eaten because it isn't very it's, common in the market here. It breaks. So it's sort of crumbling. Yeah. It's definitely black. With lingonberry. Oh God. Big bite? What do you say? I like it. No way. Mm -hmm. It's good. Really? Yeah. You're being sincere. Mm -hmm. That gives me all the confidence in the world. It's good. Okay. Tell I me what it like tastes it. like. Tell me what it tastes like. It tastes like. It looks like there is rice in it, but I'm not sure. But it does from what it. I read, it's made from pig blood. Don't tell me what it's made from. Just tell me what okay. it tastes like. <laughs> you know it's made from pig blood. I know, but already. I don't want to talk about it. And pig meat and rye. Of okay. course, there is rye in it. Oh, rye. Okay, that could be good. But very. <laughs> uh, not your typical this. sausage. It really is a fork and knife eater because it kind of crumbles. It's a little bit messy, isn't it? It kind of crumbles like yeah. that. Eat it. Mm. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's good, right? I don't it like the look of it, but it tastes pretty good actually. It is good. Wow. See, you like it. You're going for another bite. Look at. Look oh, here at we go. Here we go. Look at this. Oh, now we got a proper piece a, here. Yeah, this is a good. This is a, a better example. Look at that. 
Let me tell you something. Not bad. Now, what is the actual flavor of the sausage? I don't know. I'm really going heavy on the lingonberry because I'm nervous. <laughs> What is the actual flavor? It's hard to say. I think I it's don't... just meaty. It's good. Honestly, it reminds me of like an Indonesian Chinese food. It's called bacang. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm Where gonna... it has no blood, by the way, but the taste is similar. Bacang. Okay, we'll put a picture on the screen. I don't, <laughs> I don't know that uh, that food. I'm gonna try some just by itself. Wow. Look at this. I want to have a better description of what it tastes like because I'm a bit nervous. Yeah. <laughs> so, what does it taste like? Your face is still unsure. The actual taste is kind of good. It is good. But my brain is sending signals saying, don't like it. It's fun, but don't eat it. Don't eat it. <laughs> I'm really have to overcome my phobia. The flavor is not bad at all. It's good, by the way. Well, what would you describe the flavor as? It's like an earthy flavor. It kind of looks like that color. It tastes like it's that it color. So perfect. Um, it tastes a bit like earthy, almost like like a campfire or something. It tastes very like campfire, like a tree bark or something. Anyway, there's sausage. It's not that bad. It, it's it's pretty good. It's not bad. It's good. I like it. I'm surprised. <laughs> I saw it in the, in the in the tray over there. But oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. According to the legend, this plays an important part of Finland independence. History, yeah. So a sausage so good it uh, got the independence of the nation. So <laughs> yeah. there you have it. I mean, worth trying for sure in tempeh. Although for me, uh, I'll probably stick to the chicken wings. Mm. It's very meaty meaty and like earthy mm. it's kind of like brown or black mm. a dark kind of like but it's not like liver you know what it I mean does it does look a bit liver color but it's nothing it's, like it's better than liver it's, it's a hundred times better than liver see you keep eating it you just want more i mean it's still sausage it's sausage actually is good. good i like it's it it's actually kind of good I all mean, right i'm in the team of blood sausage yes you're a blood sausage team yeah oh blood How sausage you? Mana. i'm i'm chicken wing steve Chicken wing, Steve. Blood sausage, Tijuana. <laughs> True. Actually, which one would I prefer? Maybe the blood sausage. Wow, the ultimate champare couple. <laughs> it's good. It's kind of good. good. All right, there, everybody. Thanks for watching. I think we did it all. Yeah. Here in um, Tampare. And tonight we go to the game. Later.